Welcome to our new series on AI. Over the coming months, we'll explore the key challenges and opportunities within the rapidly evolving AI landscape. Today, we will focus on the development of artificial intelligence and machine learning enabled medical devices or AI ML enabled medical devices in the healthcare space. My name is Song Park and I'm an FDA lawyer at Reed Smith. And I'm Tom Greeson. Thank you very much, Song. I'm a healthcare regulatory lawyer here at Reed Smith. My practice focuses on representing radiologists and diagnostic imaging centers, those in the diagnostic imaging space. Prior to being in private practice, I was general counsel for the American College of Radiology. So Tom, FDA has been very active in reviewing, clearing, or otherwise authorizing AIML enabled medical devices. In fact, FDA just announced last week that 950 AIML enabled medical devices have been cleared or authorized so far. And interestingly, 76% of these are radiology related. And the vast majority, more than 97% are cleared based on the 510K clearance pathway. So what I think this tells us is that AIML enabled device development at least from an FDA regulatory perspective, is occurring most actively in the radiology space. And the fact that the 510K clearance, so the substantial equivalence standard, is being used so frequently instead of the de novo classification pathway means that these AI ML technologies are being implemented in a way that does not raise new questions of safety and effectiveness, despite the innovation and benefits that they bring so Tom, why do you think that AI ML technologies are being implemented in the radi radiology space so quickly and successfully? Are there certain needs that these technologies are addressing that were not met previously? You know, Song, I think that diagnostic radiology is really amenable to machine learning. Millions and millions of images have been reviewed by those, those uh, software products that have been developed by AI, AI developers. Uh, it's, AI has been very uh, helpful in areas like cardiac imaging and particularly in imaging of women's, women's imaging, mammography in particular. And AI is being used in increasing frequency. You know, radiologists today in their practice are really burdened. They're overwhelmed with work high volumes. There's a lot of burnout in the radiology space. And radiologists need tools like AI to be efficient and not be burdened. And to be efficient, the, these AI products need to be helpful and efficient and integrated seamlessly into the radiologist's workstation. And that's what's happening. And that's why AI is growing so rapidly in the diagnostic radiology space. You know, Sung, you and I, when we've talked to our clients that are developing these software products, we hear two terms. We hear the term of sensitivity and specificity. AI as a machine learning is sensitive to identify abnormalities in diagnostic images, but they also need to be specific so that they're not going to be uh, identifying images that could lead to false positives and a lot of results that are not helpful. It's, it's useful to think about what stakeholders uh, describe as three categories of AI in the radiology space. AI is assistive augmentative and autonomous. And we have examples of that uh, for AI that's assistive. We see things like AI triage software. We'll be talking a bit about one particular product in a second where an AI product can categorize the images that are in a radiologist's workstation in their queue and help prioritize the images that may have critical findings that need immediate attention and interpretation. AI can be augmentative to the radiologist's interpretation of these reports. One example is a long time use of computer aided detection and mammography, where CAD, computer aided detection, can assist radiologists in performing the interpretation. But it's key to understand that it's actually the physical human being, the radiologist, who's making the interpretation. Also, AI is very helpful in providing radiologists with detailed measurements of key findings of abnormalities that have to be reported and documented in the radiology report. And their AI is providing wonderful, accurate information and relieves radiologists of the burdens of doing that um, uh, physically. And finally, 
Probably the most talked about use of AI is whether AI will become autonomous. Will there be software generated findings without the use of a radiologist? And that's going to be obviously the new frontier for diagnostic imaging using AI. Tom, as Tom noted, AI ML enabled radiology software medical devices are making big differences in radiologist practices and in improving patient care. Previously, we had reported on FDA's what's reported to be the first grant of a breakthrough designation for a radiology triage software medical device, which is the device that Tom just referenced, Annalise AI's software. A follow-up development that we'd like to report on, and one that I think many in the audience will be interested in, is the inclusion of a payment scheme for Annalise AI software in the 2025 calendar year, Medicare Hospital Inpatient Prospective pay Payment Systems, or IPPS rule. More specifically, this was done in the form of a temporary add-on payment to hospitals as part of the new technology add-on payment program, or NTAP, which is a CMS program for new technologies. With that, I will turn this over to Tom, who can offer more insight on this development and the NTAP program. Well, specifically, this AI triage product relates to helping identify obstructive hydrocephalus cases. And that was the, that was the software that you mentioned that was approved by FDA through the Breakthrough Technology Pathway. And this is also the technology that has been granted this NTAP or new technology add-on payment additional support that's limited to payments for discharged Medicare hospital inpatients. It doesn't apply to services performed in physician offices or independent diagnostic testing facilities, but it is an additional payment. And I think obviously those that are involved in this field are really interested in seeing what economic models will be created to help support those providers who are going to be investing in this innovation to uh, bring into their practice. So it's going to be very important to find these methodologies for adding payment. Specifically what CMS did in the IPPS 2025 fiscal year rule is they created this three-year limited new technology add-on payment to provide additional payment for the use of this AI triage product in cases of inpatients who had been discharged. The payment amount is 65% of the average cost of the technology or the lesser of that amount or 65% of the cost in excess of the Medicare DRG payment. Specifically for this Annalise product for obstructive hydrocephalus triage, the payment for fiscal year 2025 is $241.39. That's 65% of the average cost of the technology. So that's one example of payment coming into the system to support AI. We, we may though see as these products develop, products will be coming to the AMA CPT editorial panel for creating codes that would describe the use of this product and eventually find their way into the AMA Relative Value Update Committee to add to, to assign relative values for these services. So it's going to be very interesting to watch these developments. Just one practice tip with these payments, we need to, as lawyers, make sure we counsel our clients on things like the Medicare any markup test rule that will affect their purchase of these outside services from suppliers to make sure they're not gonna be penalized by the anti-markup test. And I guess my final comment about AI and radiology, Sung, as we close, is that it's gonna be fascinating to watch as to whether or not use of these AI tools by radiologists becomes a standard of care. Will plaintiff's attorneys, when they bring lawsuits against radiologists who may have failed to diagnose an abnormality in a patient, will they bring in expert witnesses to, to testify that the standard of care would require a radiologist to make use of AI software in order to provide care without being negligent in providing that care to that patient. So this is a fascinating area. You know, I'm really proud of my partnership on these issues with you, Sung. So thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for this wonderful update, Tom.